translator uh, here tonight, which is Rev. Jane Sylvia Castaneda. Sylvia, thank you for being here tonight. Anybody needs translation services, she can certainly help out. Uh, I'd also like to recognize any, uh, just raise your hand, any, any students and parents that are here tonight that have come out to, uh, to listen to the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and, and, and after all, this is what this conversation is about. That's the most important thing we have to work with our students and support our parents and students in this, in this process. Um, also, I'd like to recognize any staff members from uh, Nash County Schools who might be here tonight. Thank you for showing their hand. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you being here. And uh, also, I'd just like to recognize any of our elected officials uh, in, in the group tonight, any elected officials. I see a number of our board members. Um, and, 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 and finally, I'd like to recognize our, our staff that's been here working so hard on the merger and the plan. Any of our staff members from Edson County Public Schools who are here that support the plan. Thank you for setting everything up tonight. And uh, all your all your, all your, your hard work on, on that. Um, in most meetings, I like to start off with um, some, some good news. And, uh, just like to recognize tonight, obviously, um, as superintendent, I'm very proud of Edson County Public Schools. Uh, I've only been there since September 1st, but it's been a, a great transition and great people to work with. And I'm very proud of our schools. And uh, one of the things I'd just like to share with folks is uh, when the last accountability um, results came out, 11 of our 14 schools in Edson County Public Schools uh, met or exceeded growth. And, <laughs> Also, our, our school district school district exited low performing status, which is critically important for the state. Yes. So, due to a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work from our uh, students, staff, parents, and community. Because as we all know, it takes everyone working together to make it happen in schools. And uh, it's, uh, it's critically important. And that's why we're here tonight. We're here tonight to talk about uh, important things to help us to help us transition for the merger uh, that's coming up in August of 2024. One other thing I like to remind, particularly staff members of tonight who are here from the National Schools, our human resources uh, group is in the back. Anybody who wants to, whether you're with National Security Schools, anyone else who might want to apply, you can go straight back there and uh, inquire about any positions that we have and uh, anything that. Uh, that you might be interested in, in Public Schools. So, just to frame tonight, so everybody has an idea of what we're looking at, a brief welcome of what I'm going to talk about, give you a little bit of a history on the merger uh, and information regarding that and how we got here tonight. Um, the yeah, Senate Bill 248 the plans information that we had put together a plan to make the merger work, and then questions and answers. And then we're going to shift the conversation. Uh, if they, they thought it was at the last community meeting that I was uh, involved with and, and we were involved with, we talked about all the logistics involved in the plan and how important that is. And it is. But as I said a little bit earlier, the most important thing is how we're going to better serve our students and our parents and community. And we want to, we want to dig deeper into that tonight at the end of our meeting so you can have input and begin to develop that partnership to make sure our schools are serving our students and best and their ability. And that, that's critically important. So I'd like to stay around for that because I think, I think in many ways that's the most important part of our conversation tonight as we, as we move forward. Uh, as I said before, these are uh, a few of the, of the many folks who've worked on our merger process. This is the core team that's been leading this. And they've done that same job here all around the room tonight, but I want to thank them for their their efforts in, in, what, in what they have done. Also, just want to talk a little bit about uh, the expectations for tonight. We, we want to make sure that everyone has a chance to ask a question, make comments, share anything they want to share tonight. Uh, we will stay here until we need to stay here to make sure we do that for folks. We just look at the expectations. I'm going to boil it down to a really simple idea that we just treat each other with respect tonight as we ask questions and make comments and we'll have a great evening of exchanging ideas to make sure that that we're we're moving forward and uh 
as I said before, we're really trying to shift the conversation tonight to the educational opportunities we can offer for our students. Last week, I had the first of a group of parent advisory meetings with, uh, with some parents from, uh, from, the, from the community. And they shared some really important things, I think, about how we move forward, concerns they have, things they want for their children, and it was really informative for us to, uh, to start that process. So if you're a parent and, and want to be a part of something with that, we'll have more parent advisory meetings coming up in the near future, and we'd love you to be a part of that. We will also be putting together some staff advisory groups from the staff in each of the, each of the four schools. And also, I'm going to be talking to students as well. I want to hear about their experiences uh, in, in each of our schools and how we can make that better for them. So I, I think that student experience and what they have to share is really important. And they're going to tell you the absolute truth about what they experience. And uh, so we're excited about that. So as we move on to the second part of our agenda, I'd like to invite Eric Evans, county manager at the County Public Schools, come forward, talk a little bit about the history of this, the merger, and how we got here. Uh, he's a great county manager, and he's done an outstanding thing for our community. So I will turn it over to uh, Eric Evans. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure and honor to be here tonight. I'm grateful to get the opportunity to certainly work with Dr. Brian, his team, this wonderful school board uh, on a daily basis, but uh, very fortunate to be able to work together with this wonderful team in this transition process. Also along with the Nash County Superintendent, uh, his team and board, uh, thank you Dr. Washington for being here tonight from Nash County School Board. So I, I wanted to share a little bit from uh, tonight from the perspective of Edgecombe County um, our involvement from somewhat of history at the beginning of how we got here tonight, um, our role in this now, and how we work together with the school system to move forward to make this transition um, as smooth as possible. As you all know, uh, the uh, back in the early 90s, there was a change in the, in the structure of our school system in both counties. At city schools, both here in Rockman and Tarboro, that were consolidated to Nash County Schools and to Edgecombe County Schools. And so, as you see on this map here, it shows that there are school districts right here in Rocky Mountain that cross that county line. It used to be uh, referred to as uh, Nash Rocky Mountain Schools, now Nash County Schools. And come the fall of next year, those school districts are going to move to the county line. That's why this is referred to as a county line merger. But this conversation and how we got here it actually uh, started a few years ago. So back in 2015, we started having some conversation and some meetings with uh, both school boards, both boards of commissioners to talk about the structure as it has been. One of the questions that was raised and really brought us to the table was whether or not we, Edgecombe County, have been paying our proportionate share of funding for our students who live in Edgecombe County but attend Nash, Ben Nash Rocky Mountain Schools. And so we had several meetings about that, and some of you may have been in some of those meetings or at least heard of those meetings. Uh, one of the things we were able to clarify quickly was that, yes, we were paying our proportionate share based on the number of students. But that just led to other discussions. At that time, there, there was discussion, there was somewhat of a push to move to a county line merger then, in 2015. At the time, our board and both school boards didn't feel like that was the best thing to do. We felt like it would be just too disruptive to the students and we worked together really to try to stop that. And we did stop. So it didn't happen back in 2015 when there was a push for it. For that. What did happen was what we refer to Senate Bill 382, which is Section Law 2016-14. A new state law was passed in 2016 that said a few different things. One of the things that it said was, first of all, the name of the school district had to change. And so, as I mentioned, it used to be Nash Rocky Mountain Schools, now it's Nash County School District. 
Another thing in that bill, among other things, what it is said that Rocky Mount could no longer contribute what we call the gap funding. That is the difference in the per pupil allocation. So basically counties are responsible to, to provide uh, two types of funding to school systems. It's what they call current expense. That's basically operating funds. That's um, used to help for day-to-day -day operations. It's also used to pay the local supplement and some other things. The other type of funding that we provide is for capital whether that be just annual, ongoing, work and repair to buildings, building new schools, additions to new schools, financing, all of that. Now, as, as I'm sure you understand that Nash County has a much greater tax base than Edgecombe County. That's not a negative statement, it just, it is what it is, okay? And because of that, Nash County can afford to put more money into the school system. And so what we have been doing for years is making a calculation of based on what Nash puts in for their students, what we put in for ours, we do a per student calculation. And there is a difference between what Nash County is able to put in and what Edgecombe County is able to put in. And what has been happening since the early 90s until this Senate Bill 382, the city of Rocky Mountain used to pay that difference. That difference would fluctuate from year to year. It depended on how much Nash put in, how much Edgecombe put in, how many students from each of the counties into the school district. That number would fluctuate anywhere from around $400,000 a year to as much as over $700,000 a year. That was called the gap funding. Rocky Mountain used to pay that gap. Senate Bill 382 said that Rocky Mountain could no longer do that. So Edgecombe County had to take on that responsibility. Now, you know, we certainly were going to abide to a, abide by a state law, but it put, it put us into a very precarious position because now we are making a greater per student allocation for those 16 or 1,700 students that are going to Nash County schools than we are to the students going in Edgecombe County schools. So that was the first thing we said. That's, that's tough for us to live with. The other thing that it said, if you go back to the previous slide, the other thing that it said, it requires us to pay our proportionate share of capital costs regardless of where that money was to be spent. For example, um, I'm very happy that uh, Nash County Schools and Nash County are able to build a new elementary school in, uh, in Red Oak. I believe this, this first year opened. Beautiful school, very happy for that we had to pay our proportionate share. Usually it was around 11 or 12 percent, depending on the number of students. The problem, we're great, we're glad for Nash County and Nash County Schools to be able to do that. The problem for us is that we had few to no students to go to that elementary school, but yet we had to pay our proportionate share. And, you know, so though back in 2015, early 2016, our board was pushing against county line or school merger, our board had to reconsider and said, you know, now we don't, our board said, we don't feel like we can live with this long term. So let's reconsider. So uh, just being transparent, not a, not, uh, it wasn't a unanimous vote from our board, but the majority of our board decided we need to do something different. So we need to now move towards a county line merger. Now, that bill right there said that if Edgecombe County at any point contributed less than our proportionate share, it would immediately trigger a county line merger. Our board decided, the majority of the board decided, we want to trigger a county line merger. So we have been moving in this direction for a couple of years anyway. But then a new uh, Senate Act or a new legislative action came about uh, just here recently, and that is uh, Senate Bill 248. Now, Senate Bill 248 of a few things says that county line merger is going to happen anyway, regardless of what kind of funding Edgecombe County sends to Nash County. So it is by state law a done deal. It says in that statute that this is going to happen, it has to happen by the fall of next year. It says that we have to put together a transition plan that has to be submitted 
um, to the State Board of Education by November 15th, which a lot of people in this room, including myself, have been working on that for the last uh, several months. So I say that, and I want to pause just for that to sink in for a moment, because I know still at this point that there are people, you know, you feel like this shouldn't happen. What can, we, we, why are you doing this? And I just want to say, regardless of how we might feel about it, anybody might feel about it, it is state law. So it's going to happen. So this is just my personal and my professional opinion, is that I think our energy is now better spent in making this transition as smooth as possible and as best as possible for students in both school districts and for the teachers and for the parents. And that's why uh, wonderful people here in this room, including folks from Nash County Schools, have been working hard, very hard, and working very well together in making this transition as smooth as possible. So that's sort of the history of it and how we've gotten to this point. Now, I, I just want, I want this group to know, and we've been making this point in every meeting that we've had, um, is that Edgecombe County, our Board of Commissioners, we have been always committed to the students who are Edgecombe County residents, but go to Nash County Schools. And we will continue to be committed to help provide and invest in the best education that we possibly can. This uh, table here just shows the amount of funding that Edgecombe County has been uh, allocating for the students that live in Edgecombe County, but have up to now, up to next year, going to Nash County School. And you can see it's, it's no small figure. You'll see that gap right there, the third column, as of uh, 2021, that's blank because now that is no longer provided by the city of Rocky Mountain. We now pay that as a part of our total uh, uh, current expense cost. So we've been spending millions of dollars on behalf of our students that go to Nash County Schools. We will continue with that investment and making that commitment throughout this process of moving um, into the future. Um, just a couple of highlights, other highlights to talk about our commitment to the future of, of our students. Um, we are very happy to provide some additional funding in our budget this current year to increase the local supplement for the teachers in Edgecombe County Schools. That is, uh, that is one of the key points in competing for talent across school districts. I'm sure, you know, I'm not telling anybody anything new, especially the teachers, you know this, you're paid on a salary scale, the same salary scale across the state depending on your degree and how many years you've been teaching. The difference is how much supplement the local, um, the local unit is able to pay. It, sometimes districts pay 2%, there are some districts that pay 15% plus. Um, we were able to appropriate a little over 650,000 of additional funds this year to raise the local supplement in Edgecombe schools from 7% to 10%. So now that's just 1% short of, uh, one percentage point short of the supplement that's being paid in Nash County Schools. Just to sort of put that in perspective, um, for a teacher that's making $40,000 a year, that's a difference of $400 a year. The difference between 10% and 11% supplement, that's a difference of about $33 per month. Now I know nobody hates to give up $33, but, I just want to make the point we have worked very hard to try to close that gap. Because I know Dr. Bryan and the school board that you, you want and you need these teachers to come into your district and want them to be interested in, in this expedited application process uh, to, to be able to work here and help continue to teach these students. So it's important that I highlight that point. Um, we're also exploring other funding opportunities to meet facility needs um, in, in these four school buildings that we will inherit, our school system will inherit, as well as um, needs that will arise as a result of the transition in particular of high school kids. So um, that's something that we're continuing to explore. And we're also making investments to remove barriers to post-secondary education. We, we want to you know, take a long view of education from all of, not just through high school, but beyond high school. And so we're very proud that we've worked with our partners at Edgecombe Community College 
Dr. McLeod is here tonight. Thank you, sir, for your hard work, you and your team and your board. Uh, we have invested some money uh, to help create, uh, to help hopefully bridge some funding gaps. Uh, you can go to the Community College website and see on their home page of a new program that we were able to do together called the Educom Works Promise Program, where uh, Educom Canada resident can get up to $1,000 to help fill some of those funding gaps that oftentimes will prevent a student from either starting, getting that certificate of training or a two-year degree that they need, or it prevents them from finishing. So we're proud of that. We're gonna keep making that commitment. A few years ago, just after I became manager um, at a retreat with our board, I asked them the question. I said, we have about a $75,000 budget, or $75 million budget a year. That's a lot of money, but we can't do everything with it. So if we can't do everything, what do we want to make sure that we do first? And that's for their priorities. And number one on their list is education. So they've made that commitment, they're sticking to that commitment, we're gonna to continue to do that uh, through this process and beyond that process. So I think that's my last slide, I believe. Um, and I'll be around if there are any other questions later that I can help to, to answer. But now I want to introduce Mr. Ronnie Sharp, who is the director of transition. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Don't you hate to follow the public speaker? Like Eric Evans, but don't you also love to follow a public speaker like Eric Evans at the same time? This is an amazing time to follow. He did a beautiful job of explaining um, the information that we need to know about with regards to the history of the funding pieces for this emergency. So, I'm going to piggyback a little bit on some of the things that you shared, Eric, because uh, as of June 12, 2023, uh, the North Carolina General Assembly, 2023-37 Senate Bill 248 written plan of transfer became a state statute. That simply means that we were required at that time to merge all of the students who live on the Edgecombe County side of Rocky Mountain into the Edgecombe County public school system. What you see here are a couple of codes. These QR codes um, are designated for the last meeting that was held at the Rocky Mountain Event Center. And at that event center, uh, we introduced a copy of the actual draft. And that actual draft looks like this. So if you would like to access and examine this draft a little more closely and more detail, Feel free to exercise that option and scan that QR code on the left and it will take you directly to that document. The document on the right, on the other hand, is an actual copy of the presentation from last Monday night's meeting. So if you'd like to know what was shared at that meeting, feel free to scan that code as well. School structures. One of the parents, I don't see her now, I think she was happy about what I shared with her because it appears that she left, or maybe she had another obligation that she was required to do. But what happened was she was sitting on the end over there, her, her husband and her child. And she asked me, she said, Mr. Sharp, I'm going to ask you a question. And I said, sure. She said to me, she said, Mr. Sharp, my child is a kindergarten student. And she, um, is attending the school that she really, really loves. And she wants to continue to attend that school. And she asked the question, will she continue to be able to attend it? And I said, absolutely. And the reason why is because we heard you as a community. We heard the comments that you all shared at our community design meeting. We heard the comments that you shared on our interest survey. We heard the comments that you shared in our empathy interview. We heard the comments that you shared at our board meetings. And because we heard your concerns, we heard your cries, we decided, along with um, pending board approval, 
that we will keep the school structures and maintain those current school configurations for our four newly acquired Rocky Mountain schools during the 24-25 school year and beyond the same. Now, if you look up to the left and down at the bottom, you will notice that these are the recommendations for those school structures. You will see that pre-kindergarten and second grade will continue to attend therapy that's for the young ladies. Child attending school, Pierce Johnson, third and fifth grade, Baskerville, kindergarten through fifth grade. <laughs> and uh, you will note that in the written CDC pre K pending licensure, that simply means that we are not allowed to actually implement a program by ourselves. We must adhere to state policy, and state policy for the North Carolina Department of Public, Public Instruction says that we have to get that licensure before we're able to implement another preschool program at another school site. Parker will continue to encompass six to eight grades. Ninth grade student center will be held at either the Rocky Mountain Industrial Incubator or North Edge Home High School. High school students. Our ninth grade students will have a unique educational ed experience at either the Edge Home County Industrial Incubator or North Edge Home High School. Students can also apply to Edge Academy great programs, and our wonderful health science program at the Edge Home Early College High School. Now, our ninth grade students will continue, continue to participate, and they will participate in athletics at North Edge Home High School. Students entering 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th grades will have the opportunity to continue as legacy students. Now, legacy students simply means that those are students who are in the 10th through the 12th grade who currently attend Nash County Public School. Those students will be able to continue to attend their through graduation. 10th through 12th grade students who are led to come to PCPS will attend North Edge Home High School or Edge Academy. Those are 9th and 10th grade students. Staffing. Um, Dr. Bryan mentioned uh, just briefly that our, our, you know, our school system, we have an invitational spirit here at our school system, and we really would like be able to employ lots of our Nash County teachers and staff. And so we are inviting you all to continue to serve with us in our Edge Home community. And as you as he highlighted earlier, we have uh, Dr. Pittman and also Mr. Barnes in the back right here who will welcome you and guide you through that expedited process. That expedited application and acceptance process will be utilized for our staff who are currently serving at our four schools. We have the elementary, Baskerville Elementary, G.S. Johnson Elementary, and Parker Middle School. ECPS will host a series of talent recruitment events in the future and tonight uh, in the surrounding areas to, to attract administrators, teachers, and other school personnel. In fact, we hosted one at our previous community outreach meeting that was held at G.S. Johnson one month ago, approximately one month ago. So, how are you doing with ECPS? How are you doing the team? Well, you can visit our recruitment table in the back, and those wonderful ladies will help you through that process. Or you can contact Denisha Barnes, our Director of Talent Recruitment and Development for additional information. Our transfer of assets. Items purchased with state funds. Let's review that real quickly. ECPS and National County Public Schools are working collaboratively to transfer these items uh, through e in, in, into ECPS. Now, it's a very complicated process, but uh, at this point, I'm going to just give a quick shout out to Nash County Public Schools and uh, their transition team, their administrative unit, etc., who work very closely with us to make sure that that happens in as seamless a, a process as possible under the conditions that this is something that's truly unique, this, this demerger and this merge. This is something that we've never seen before. So items purchased with these federal funds, um, ECPS and the National County Public Schools are working in collaboration with the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction and the U.S. Department of Education to determine the reasonable fair value of those assets and how ECPS will acquire those selected assets. Technology. Um, there's a parent who had a question uh, and she asked Dr. Brown this question about technology. She was really, really concerned. And the reason why I know she was concerned was because she mentioned it to us 
on several different occasions. He made sure that it was firmly entrenched in our minds and in our psyche so that we will remember to share it with you all. What he simply said was this, parents are concerned whether or not those kids will have the identical or even better technological processes that are in place for those youngsters to be able to succeed inside and outside the classroom. Because we know that they take many of those units home in the afternoon. So we want to just be here to assure you all to calm you all down as we did with that parent who was sitting on the end over there earlier tonight who left because she got the question answered that she wanted answered that we're going to make sure our youngsters have what they need in order to be successful. Transportation. Edgecombe County Public Schools will receive buses from the Nash County Public School System. Now, what has happened is our freedom buses are 65 passenger buses. The Nash County freedom buses are 72 passenger buses. Therein lies a little bit of a problem because we can only house and service 65 passenger buses. So, Nash County Public Schools has worked co closely with us along with the Department of Public Construction. We met with them in Raleigh on a Thursday, and they assured us that they will work closely and collaboratively with us uh, to, to co-join with local units who actually have access to 65 passenger buses. But what we really wanted to assure you all about was we heard through the grapevine that Nash County Schools was going to give us all whole buses. That's not accurate. Okay? That training will occur. That training and that transfer will occur. We will make sure that our youngsters are riding in quality buses, right, that are sufficient to take care of our needs. Academic programs. This is the pivot right here. This is one of the reasons why we're here tonight. This is going to be a very exciting. This, this part of the presentation is a little bit, well, not it's a little bit boring, not as exciting, but trust me, when we get to this academic piece, you all are going to be so excited. So get ready, because we are in the process of creating design teams with our teachers, our parents, our guardians, our students, and all of our community members to build signature learning experiences for our grades spanning from pre-K through two, three through five, six through eight, and ninth grade and beyond. If you would like to join hands with us in making that happen, making that an efficient and effective process for our youngsters to inspire them, let's get involved. Scan that QR code, it will take you to a site where you can join us. So please join us. We welcome you. The very end of Well, the first time I met Dr. Brown, he was standing here with a fence at the Tarboro High School football game. And when I walk over, I'm not old anyway, right? So I just walked over and just introduced myself. And the first thing out of his mouth was, Ron, he said, the process is just beginning and the work is just beginning. He said, and one of those pieces that I want us to focus on is that community involvement piece. And I said, Dr. Brian, we shall do that. We shall comply. And noting that he suggests committed to transparency and continuous communication with our community as we transition our students and families into our district. What that simply means is this. Throughout this entire process since I've been here in Edgecombe County Public Schools, we have met with community design teams. Ms. Washington was a member of the design team. So the reason why I mentioned her name is because we, 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 we reached across the aisle way back before anyone knew we were reaching across the aisle to make sure that we were inclusive. We had Thomas L. Walker Jr. and others, and I'm just naming those because those are Nash County residents, right? And so what we wanted to do was configure a comprehensive group of folks who represented all of our constituency, right? And we were able to do so in that design process through our monthly community meetings, our superintendent parent advisory council meetings, which began last week, our signature learning experience design team, which we'll hear more about in just a few minutes, our line with our school calendars. Just speaking real briefly about that, we uh, we heard Dr. Farrell, and Dr. Farrell mentioned that 
conceivably we could have a student who would attend Edgecombe County Public Schools, maybe in middle or elementary school, and then a high school student who would perhaps be attending one of the schools in, that's situated in Nash County. And that would perhaps conceivably create a problem. And so what we wanted to do was to address that. So what we did was work closely with Nash County in order to align our calendars so that they, they were just juxtaposed the same way and so that parents you know, we can eliminate and maybe minimize as many of those disruptions as possible. We also wanted to create a welcome packet for our families. Now, that welcome pack packet is in, in the works right now, and we're going to share a little bit more about that uh, when uh, the lovely and candid, talented Jessica Parker will present her next piece. Our uh, merger plan and transition timeline, this is just basically it, 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 it just illustrates a little bit about our timeline and the busy month that we're having. Moving forward, the major things to remember are on November 15th, that joint written plan of transfer is to be submitted to the North Carolina State Board of Education, and Mr. Evans mentioned that a little bit earlier. The other piece is that they are working on, when I say they, I'm talking about the Edgecombe County Board of Commissioners, the Nash County Board of Commissioners, Edgecombe County Board of Education, Nash County Board of Education, they're working conjointly on uh, creating that plan and making sure that it's, it is a cohesive plan, and then we'll approve that at the regular November meeting. And I looked earlier today, I know that National is on the first Monday, I'm not sure exactly when ours is part, but uh, we will be implementing those processes. We will also hold additional parent advisory committee meetings at every one of our schools. Every one of our schools, meaning all of our schools that are East Rocky Mountain, schools and also all of, of, of our Edgecombe County schools that we currently also are working with. On the 29th, our next community um, outreach meeting, merger out, outreach meeting will occur at Parker Middle School from 5.30 to 7 o'clock and we ask you to come out and join with us. Now, for the question and answer period, um, you'll notice in the back back there, there's Dr. Meyer back there and uh, also, Ms. Parker, and uh, I think we have a couple more volunteers who are going to help carry around the mic. I think Ms. Holt maybe might help us with that part. So if you have questions or concerns, all we ask you to do is just raise your hand, and a group of us will try to respond to all of your inquiries. And uh, when we can't respond, we'll ask our superintendent. So, yes, ma'am. We're going to bring the microphone to you. So those persons who maybe are not comfortable um, sharing on the microphone, we have some cards. We can write those on those cards. We'll read those from those cards for you. Um, just to work with you. Um, my question is, the legacy kids that will be attending the um, high school, will they have transportation to get to school that's on the national side? The legacy students on the national side? Edgecombe, and you can turn it. Oh, okay. Yes. So the bus will still be picking them up. Absolutely. Thank you. I don't know if my question is uh, 149, but I have a grandson that would normally belong to uh, West Edgecombe next year. But we live in Berkshire, so I'm trying to find out what he had to offer. That's, uh, that's correct. But you could also uh, apply as part of the transfer process if you want to have a different My question is for the incubator situation. Um, is there a number of students that you have an expectation who will attend there to qualify as that being a um, reasonable site? Uh, because if the majority of the students want to go elsewhere, you know, what would be the most reasonable alternative? Okay, so I'll make sure I understand your question. You, first of all, you're asking how many students per. So there are approximately 120 students who are rising ninth graders. Mm -hmm. And I think the next question that you're asking is, 
will they be placed at the incubator site? As, as, I'm sorry? A point of clarification. Yes, Suppose they decide to go to the, is it West Edgecombe? North Edgecombe. The North Edgecombe yes. School, like the, the majority, like the 90%. So what if we're going to the regular school? Would that influence some dynamics in the decision making for placement? No, especially for staff and et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of the incubator site, mm -hmm. um, we are actually, that decision regarding where those kids will be attending is a decision that's pending right now, um, pending board approval. So we are in the decision making process as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. But we know that with regards to athletics, that our students, regardless of whether they are going to be attending the incubator site or whether they're going to be attending North Edgecombe, they're going to participate in athletics at North Edgecombe High School and all of the other requisite programs that will be associated with them attending a regular high school. Those will happen at North Edgecombe High School. Does that help? Yes, thank you. I believe that. 
I'm a product of Ditchco County, a proud product of Tarver, North Carolina. Anything can happen if you believe. So we believe. Questions? I am going to. Oh, one more question? Oh, okay. 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 So I'm going to transition this part of the forum over to the lovely and talented. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm Thank you, Dr. Martin. I'm, I'm taking the lovely and talented place of this one. Dr. Martin. We had a last minute switch up, so. Good evening, everyone. So I'm Michael Meyer, Deputy Superintendent and Chief Academic Officer for Hedgecombe County Public Schools. And my colleague back there, Dr. Um, Ms. Swanson, is Assistant Superintendent for Innovation. And we're going to get started. So we've had a couple of questions about just some of the things that we do in Edgecombe County to really support our students. And so we're going to start tonight, and our district is broken up in sort of three ways of what we like to look at it right now. We have the north side, we have Tarboro, and then we have the south side, the southwest of Edgecombe County. So I'm going to start with north Edgecombe. <clears throat> so we have three schools in the north Edgecombe area, Coker, Coker uh, Wimberley, which is an elementary school, Phillips Middle, and North Edge Home High School. And so what you see, what you're seeing here is just some of the things that our students are involved in on a daily basis, um, through weekend activities as well as evening activities. A couple of other things, and I'm going to read these. I typically don't like to read, but the writing is sort of small in the pictures. So at Coker Wimberley, the STEM and maker space, students use snap circuits and other tech tools to solve real world problems. And they have some of these activities on Saturdays for parents to come out, as well as they do these activities during the summer for their students. Phillips Middle School students explore their passions and a variety of innovative classes and clubs. And you will hear us talk a lot about passions in Edgecombe County because we believe that in addition to the reading and writing, we should allow our students to pursue their passions. And so you may hear me talk about that a couple of times throughout the presentation this evening. And finally, on our north side, we have North Edgecombe High School Learning Showcases. This is something the school started last year, which is a great way. It's like a parent, it's almost like a student-led parent conference. But basically what happens is students invite their parents out, they invite the community out, and they do this twice a year, once in the fall and once in the spring. And they talk about the things that they learn. But I do want to say just be careful when you go because you may be roped into actually participating. I went and I learned a couple of Spanish phrases and understood some things about Spanish that I didn't know uh, from the students. I got to experience some um, art projects and so forth. So it's very fun for the parents. Again, we started last year, but it has become very popular in the community. Next, we have Southwest Edge Home Field Pattern. Our schools in the southwest portion of our county include Carver Elementary, Bullock, and South Edge Cone Middle. So at Carver Elementary School, we are doing um, project-based learning, introducing our fifth graders to emergency weather kits. It's the picture that you see here. Um, and then at Bullock, partnership with Southwest, and that's one of our Southwest um, football players is out reading with one of our uh, elementary students and supporting them through the emotional um, support um, program that they have at the school. And then of course at South Edgecombe Middle School, 100% of the students take an academic support class and receive personalized remediation and or enrichment. 100%, that means the students that are excelling as well as the students who are struggling um, are assigned to the class and that's intentional. And then each one of those classes is staffed with a certified teacher and they provide the, first, um, the exact structures and services that those students need to be successful. <coughs> Continuing on the southwest side, we have West Edge Home Middle School, and they are part of the project Desire with NC State. And the students create a variety of product, um, products like solar power, remote control cars, 
and tour local businesses to learn more about STEM careers. One of the other things that the students do at West Edge Conference that has become very popular is an evening with Santa. It's a STEM activity where parents get to come out, bring your children, meet Santa Claus, as well as do STEM activities. Kids love it. Parents love it too. Southwest Edgecombe High School redesigned with Transcend. And this um, Transcend is an, an organization that we partner with to try to look at to how we restructure our high schools because we don't want our students to just have a high school experience. We want them to have the high school experience that they will remember for a lifetime. Again, pursuing those passions that they are so um, interested in. Another thing I want to highlight about Southwest High School, we have a wealth lab at Southwest High School and we partner closely with the community college where those students are able to work on their certifications and then move right over to community college and eventually into a trade. Now we're in the Tarboro Princeville area. Princeville Elementary School, Coding Panthers. Our students, um, as you can see, that state, um, state superintendent Catherine Truitt um, sharing uh, with our elementary students at Princeville. They were invited last year to go to uh, the department and show off what they were learning through STEM. So we were happy and excited about that. Our students at Ele uh, Cox Elementary School, one school, one book, and then all fifth graders read the same book at home with their families. But to add to that, central office staff also record themselves reading various chapters in the book. And what we try to do when we read those, read them as animated as we possibly can so that the students will also have an opportunity to not only read the book in class, but also hear us read it. So with the central office staff and then get community support to come in and read as well. But those are recorded and the students get access to those uh, recordings. W.A. Matillo, who started a theater arts program their last year. Um, this is the students performing in their first Black History um, program. I was able to talk to the teacher earlier this month, and they will have a full production later this year. I think they are shooting for December, uh, around December, the first of December for that production. Martin Millennium Academy, Ignite Tutoring with TFA. So Martin Millennium is also unique in that it is a K-8 Spanish immersion school. Students who are in the Spanish immersion classroom, they receive 90% of their instruction in Spanish starting in kindergarten. So if students are interested in that program, it goes from kindergarten through eighth grade. Edge Grove College, Washington DC trips resumed. So students at Edge Academy, Edge Cone Grove College, excuse me, um, take a trip to Washington, D.C. each year that they are at the school. They take different trips. And so this one is showing our freshmen, sophomores, and juniors because typically it starts with the freshman class. But because of COVID, everyone got to go on, on the trip last year. Tower High, Power Block. Again, this is an opportunity for students to explore their passions. And we have Power Blocks at each one of our high schools. And this is um, a time where students are either going to one of their passions or they're going to a class for extra support um, with some of the classes that they're having. And so just moving on, looking at some of our district-wide initiatives that are unique, not only to just a single school, but here's a um, partner. Um, this school opened this year, Edge Academy of Health Sciences, and this is located on the campus of Edge Home Community College in Rocky Mountain. Students will get a unique learning experience. This is a quick one minute video by our um, director of secondary education. Attention all Edgecombe County Schools, eighth graders and ninth graders. My name is Dr. Robert Fax and I serve as your director of secondary education. I am excited to offer you another option for your high school experience. Beginning in fall 2023, we will be opening the Edge Academy of Health Sciences. This new early college will focus on health science pathways that will ultimately lead to careers in the medical field. Though so this will be an early college focused on rigorous instruction through the use of project-based learning and passion projects, students will be able to fully take advantage of the high school experience. 
Students at this new school will be able to participate in signature high school experiences like athletics, prom, field trips, clubs at the school, and college level, and much, much more. If you are chosen to be in this first cohort of students, you will also be privileged with being on the planning committee to make lasting decisions for the school, like choosing the school mascot, the school colors, the logo, and the motto. You'll be able to put your stamp on the school. So if you're looking for a non-traditional high school setting with traditional high school experiences, the Edge Academy of Health Sciences may be the place for you. So if you are a current 8th or 9th grader, interested in a career in the health sciences field, and are up for the challenge of a rigorous instructional model, please see your guidance counselor for an application or for more information. Yes, yes, it is located on the campus of um, Rocky Mount, the ECC campus in Rocky Mount. And we did have students from Nash County who were interested last year because we went around to all of the schools that have our students in, in those schools. And so those students were able to apply. And again, we are accepting students in ninth and 10th grade. And I have talked to the principal and depending on the student's circumstances and situation, we will consider students who are in the 11th grade. So that would be on an individual basis. So that's something that the students would definitely need to meet and talk with the principal about because there's certain criteria that they would need to, to have. But we're very excited about that. One of the things I will say about um, Edge Academy, um, in the video it was mentioned about the school logo. They're in the process now of selecting the school logo. So that's really big uh, for school. Students get to choose their own colors and their logo. So what you saw there is actually not the school logo or colors. Those are things that we put together as a district when we started marketing the school. But the students are going to actually choose what everything looks like. So just kind of quickly running through some other STEM activities that we have. Um, as you can see, I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I'm just going to highlight a couple of them. Um, our STEM family nights, I talked briefly about one that was at South, um, at West Edgecombe Middle School. But also if you look down Rock by Rock Elementary, it's a project-based learning experience for our students in our elementary schools. And so they have the opportunity to participate in that curriculum. And then we are also uh, partnered with uh, UNC, uh, Grand Challenge Units. That's something that we started this year with our students and it's proven to be very successful with our um, students. Esports is a huge thing. I have a teenager myself, he loves, he loves the game. We have esports at each one of our high schools. And also something I did not highlight at um, Southwest is the Spark Lab, which is an innovative lab where students get to take up the six to module um, around STEM careers and STEM activities. And so that's open to any student at Southwest High School, as well as any student in Edgecombe County that would like to participate. Post-secondary preparation. Uh, we've talked about passions. Uh, we have started internships. South um, North Edgecombe has in implemented internships at their school. But you can just see a couple of the other things here. Students credentialed in Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop, CompTIA IT, and there are many more that we did not list on um, the screen. And one of the pieces that we started last year, we partnered with, um, is, is it Gateway? Carolina's Gateway Partnership. Um, we partnered with the community college on that one where our students who graduated last year were able to um, sit through um, and get two certifications at the end of the school year. Once they graduated, they also received the stipend for just sitting through that program and participating. We had about 30 students to start the process and we had about nine students who actually completed, got their stipend. So I'm sure that we're going to have even more excitement this year because their friends are going to tell them, yeah, they actually did give you money for sitting for 40 that were, they had to sit for about 40 hours in order to get that. But those certifications paid off for them. And of course, I cannot, again, forget to just remind everyone to join our team. Uh, for more information, we have Ms. Barnes and Dr. Pittman in the back. 
So please, before you leave, if you are a current employee uh, of Dash County, please make sure that you see those ladies tonight before you leave. And I'm going to turn it over now to you. Anyway, it's not about me, it's about our user. And our user right now 
our students? What do they need in order to be successful 22nd century adults? Well, right? So, as we start talking about the design process today, I just want to give you a quick example in the real world of how this happened. So we all know General Electric, they um, were tasked, they said, hey, we need an MRI machine that is pediatric friendly, that fit kids, because we need to scan their brains and bodies and figure out what they need. So General Electric created this, all right? Smaller, it, it exists with kids, it has a bed for them. They were like, check, we did it, boom, okay? They put it in all the hospitals. The children walk in the room to get an MRI. They're terrified. They don't want to get in the machine. They don't know what's supposed to happen. They run out of the room. And so as a result, they're not able to get the information on their brains and their bodies to be able to help them, right? That was actually what we were trying to do. So General Electric went back to the drawing board and they thought about the design process. They used empathy and they talked to children, they talked to parents, they talked to the nurses that have to strap the children down in the MRI machine and figure out what do you think they need to see, how do they need to feel in order to be in this place so that we can get information on their brains and bodies so we can help them stay healthy, okay? So by going through that design process, this is what they created, right? That's right, that's it, right there, right? Okay, so if you're looking at this, it has the same function, okay? I still have a bay from the body go in, and I gotta go in this machine, you're gonna get information on my brain and my body, right? Just like the essential function of education is to inform and inspire our students to change our community, okay? You with me? So in our design process in Edgecombe County, what we work on is how can we put a little bit of this into what we're already doing? And what I want you to notice is it wasn't just a technical change, right? They had used creativity. There's someone painted this, someone created this, right? They also, if you look up here, they have a timer. They talked to a kid, probably, and he said, I don't know how long I gotta be in there. That's why I start fishing, so I won't get out. So if I'm laying on my back, I can look up and know how much longer I have. So there's multiple changes through empathy and through actually defining what it is we want to do. We didn't want a pediatric MRI machine. We wanted an MRI machine that children weren't afraid of so we could get the data on their brains and their bodies. So everybody understand why I love design thinking and design process? Yes. All right, now y'all ready to do it today? Okay, here we go. You wrote it, here we go. Y'all remember that TV show? Okay. Okay, so um, we're about to get up, we're about to start talking, and we're gonna be in the community, because I heard you when you said you all are a proud community, and it's absolutely why I took this job, because I love this community. They are proud that these schools have some traditions, and they have some, some passion that is just unnatural. Okay, unmatched, okay? Because I know about the Jazz Jaguar step team. And when I was at Cooper's elementary school with a bulldog, we didn't have one. Okay, I'm done. So, now, what I want you guys to think about are the things inside of your child's school, okay, that could, we could start, the school could start doing to better support student learning and build a sense of belonging, okay? So in Edgecombe, we know that belonging and attachment first step to learning. You just can't have the, the school and think the kid is going to learn. The kid has to feel like they belong, like they have that proud culture. Once they have that, then we can start learning, okay? So I want you to think about these three questions. Start, stop, and continue. What do you think your child's school can start doing? What do you think your child's school could stop doing that hinders student learning, hinders their feeling of like they belong? And then this is one I can't wait to see and read and learn more about, is what suggestions do you have for what your child's school can continue doing? Because what we do know at Edgecombe County is that these schools are doing some amazing things. It's just they're one of the, some of the best kept secrets in right now. And so if you guys can tell us what we're already doing inside of these schools that are working, we're gonna continue what's working. And we're gonna also consider those other ideas. Y'all ready to think? Share some ideas? All right, so it's all good time, y'all. I used to teach first grade, third grade, and sixth grade, so it don't matter, I have my own party up here. So, what I want you to do is, okay, when I say go, I learned that from Edgecombe County Public School. When I say go, okay, around the room, there's like sets of posters that say start, stop, continue, okay? There's also little caddies that have sticky notes, 
and Edgecombe County Public Schools you can. And you can keep it in your hand, that's for you, because we love you, okay? So then, what I want you to do is when you get to your, any of your groups, okay? Grab an ink pen, grab a sticky note, and write one idea per sticky note, okay? Share your ideas with your community that is here. Begin to develop and stay involved with those ideas of what you want to start, stop, and continue doing. So as you guys talk and work together, add those sticky notes to the chart, okay? And then what our team is going to do, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, is we're going to analyze those different, everything that is put on the chart. We're going to come and create some things of what everyone here said that they wanted. And then those are going to influence our decisions about what happens inside of the classrooms for our kids, okay? So, start, stop, and, oh, y'all yeah, are good, man. 100, 100. Okay, so, all right, when I say go, which I'm about to say it, just stand up, grab a caddy, grab an ink can, and please add your thoughts and ideas. We'll have about 10 minutes to do this. Yes, okay. Here is one right here by side our assistant superintendent, Aaron Swanson. Here we have another set over here. Start, stop. I think the continue may have failed, but it's on its way. Right over here by the Baskerville uh, sign. We also have one over here and then one in the back. So choose whichever one you feel. And the sticky notes and ink pens are right there. If you're ready, stay ready. If you're ready, stay ready. If you're ready, stay You are ready. She, she ready. We're going. All right, y'all, take off. We got 10 
Family is 6:55. We got about one more minute to finish up that last thought, and then we're gonna bring y'all back and close out for tonight. So we got about 60 seconds. Thank you so, so much.
you, thank you, thank you so much. If you could make your way back to your seat. If you could make your way back to your seat, thank you so much. Thank you for participating. Thank you for your ideas. Thank you for making your way back to your seat. Thank you so much. Y'all are doing amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making your way back to your seat.